So let's go over the rectus abdominis muscle. Really, really important muscle that quite often isn't addressed properly. And we're gonna see, go at it from a, in a few perspectives. One, in terms of actual soft tissue release, traditional Chinese medicine, and some adjustments that will influence the area. So first, let's talk about the rectus abdominis a bit. In terms of its function, this is the primary muscle for trunk flexion and core stabilization. It's essential for bending forward, maintaining posture, and protecting the spine. The origin is right down at the symphysis pubis and pubic crest, and then it inserts right up to the xiphoid process all the way up to the chest here, and the costal cartilages of ribs five to seven. The nerve supply is the lower intercostal nerve, so we're talking T7 to T11, and the subcostal nerve, which is T12. So, Mickey, you okay with me working around a few areas yeah. here? I'm gonna actually get up, get up around here. Now I want you to take your arms and you're going to reach right up. Okay. There, okay? Okay. Okay, not too fast, bring it up. Right back as far as you can. Okay, and back, and again, take it right up. Now I want you to take your upper leg, your right leg, and bring it back behind you. Bring it behind you, yes. Okay, that's really bringing attention now, isn't it? Now down, now bring both in. Okay, now bring both back. So obviously we're gonna do both sides of the body. Doing okay? Yeah. Take it right back. Excellent. And up. Now I'm just gonna change my bacteria a little bit here. Go up, go ahead, bring it back. Oh. Okay. You okay? Yeah, it's a tender spot. Yeah. And back. Again. Now this is really an interesting muscle because if you work on this, this will re, as you release restrictions, it will improve core mobility and function. Back. And one more time. It really does enhance uh, flexibility, spinal support, and movement efficiency in athletes. So a very important muscle. And back. Good. So let's go over a few acupuncture points which will help us to release the abdomen. We could use this for the erected abdominis, the obliques, whether it's the internal, external oblique, or even the transverse abdominis. First, let's go to gallbladder 29. So this is on the lateral side of the hip, halfway between the superior iliac spine, so superior iliac spine, and then we go down until we get to the greater trochanter of the femur, right there. And then we're gonna go halfway in between, which is gonna be right there. Now, if I get in like this, you feel it a little bit, don't yep. you? But not that much. No. Okay, but if I take my forearm here, and I go right in, that's a different story. Oh, like that. Yeah, you're gonna feel that. So we're gonna get on this area, and we're gonna stimulate it somewhere between 30 seconds to three minutes. You'd be so happy with me if I stimulated this for three minutes? <laughs> <laughs> All right. But this will help to release all the muscles in the area. It'll increase circulation and it will help to get rid of pain. So if people are really suffering from pain up in the hip or if they feel like they have a lot of tank, carrying a lot of tension through the abdominal muscles, this really does help. Doing okay there? Oh yeah. Okay, good. So this is gallbladder 29. So the next point I wanna go over is GB30. This is on the posterior lateral aspect of the hip at the junction of the lateral one-third and medial two-thirds of the distance between the greater trochanter, so over to the side here, the greater trochanter, good, and the sacral hiatus. So basically, midpoint of the gluteal crease, and then we come up from that point to about right here. Okay, how are we doing there, Mickey? Good. Right there, feeling that quite a bit? Okay, so we can just get on there, but the best way to do this is kind of take your arm in between supination and pronation. Okay, you feeling that quite a bit there? Yeah. Yeah. But this also is very powerful for releasing restrictions throughout the entire low back. 
and it will also greatly affect the abdomen because if we can release the muscles in the low back, there's also going to be a, um, a point of reciprocal inhibition. If we release muscle on one side of the body, the muscles on the other side of the body are going to loosen up quite a bit. Doing okay there? Mm -hmm. Is that starting to let go a little bit? Yeah. Okay. So this is GB30. So anytime we're releasing structures in the abdomen, the low back, we also have to consider joint manipulation, specifically spinal manipulation. This is a great way, way to wind down the central nervous system. So what we call central sensitization. The central nervous system gets wound right up when you're in pain and you start to react to even smaller amounts of stimuli. So you'll find pain keeps increasing and increasing. To break that chain, quite often we have to get in, open up the facet joints, take stress off the nervous system, wind down the sympathetic activity and become more parasympathetic dominant. Mickey, can I get you to line your back, please? So I'm just gonna check out the mid thoracic area, lumbar facets, and the SI joints. Now, we've been working with Mickey a little bit here today, so I don't think we're gonna get much release, but I just wanna show you the general areas. Inside here, you okay? Yep. Yeah. Actually, your low back is starting to let go a little bit here. This would be more time. Can you drop it down, lift your head up? Good, and well, that's fine. Yeah, those are moving. Turn on your side towards me. Now, quite often when you go in an area, I would feel a restriction, lack of mobility in the lumbar facet joints, and then we release that. The whole idea being to increase mobility and function. Drop down, good. And while I'm here, I'd also get on the SI joint just to make sure things are moving well. Good, other side, please. And again, really important that I check both sides of the spine. Down, good, no problem there. And right down, perfect. Okay. So when we go over everything, we're going to release the soft tissue, we're going to consider the fascia, and also osseous restrictions.